right, I'm going to talk to you about proportions, and proportions are when um, two equal ratios, so two, e two ratios that are equal to each other form a proportion. <clears throat> um, in this example, I'm going to kind of go back and start from the very beginning with when we started talking about ratios. Um, if I gave you the ratio one-half, which is the same thing as saying one to two, and I said that that was equal to something out of 10, you would tell me that it was equal to 5 out of 10. So that is saying that the ratio 1 to 2 is the same thing as 5 to 10. They are equal ratios, therefore they form a proportion. And there's a couple of ways you could figure out that this was 5. One, um, some of you would figure out, okay, well, 2 times 5 is 10, so I'm going to do 1 times 5, which is 5. Um, another, or some of you may figure out, okay, well, this one has to be 5 over 10 because 5 over 10 simplifies to 1 half. Any way that you want to think about it is fine. Um, <clears throat> but just keep in mind that when you're talking about equal ratios, just like equal fractions, it involves multiplication and division. It does not involve adding and subtracting. Um, a lot of people think, oh, well, 2 plus 8 is 10, so I can do 1 plus 8, which is 9. 1 half is not the same thing as 9 tenths. They're, they're not the same amount. And, and that holds true with ratios. 1 to 2 is not the same ratio as 9 to 10. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so, if, so because the ratio 1 to 2 is equal to the ratio 5 to 10, they form a proportion together. When you're talking about equal ratios, um, if I gave you the ratio 1 to 3, 2 to 6 is equal to 1 to 3 because you multiply both of these numbers by 2. Therefore, they form a proportion. 3 to 9 is equal to the ratio 1 to 3 because if I multiply both numbers by 3, I get 3 and 9, and they therefore form a proportion. So all of these ratios here are proportional to the ratio 1 to 3, or they're all proportional to each other, really. Okay? <clears throat> Um, the ratio 2 to 3, if I said for every two stars, there's three flowers. Well, if I add two more stars so that I then have four stars, I would have to add three more flowers to keep it all proportional to each other. Um, if you add two more stars to this so that you then had six stars, you would have to add three more flowers so that you had nine flowers. These are all proportional to each other. You're keeping it proportional. Whatever you do to one, you do to the other. And it's by the same factor. Um, when you're talking about ratios being equal, um, one way we can think of it is, well, 3 times 4 is 12, and I know 2 times 4 is 8, so therefore these two are equal. Uh, you can also think that 8 twelfths simplifies to 2 thirds, so that's another way that we know they are equal. Well, something else you can do to determine whether two ratios are equal or whether two ratios form a proportion is to cross multiply. And it's very similar to when we cross multiply with fractions just to decide whether or not they're equal. You're going to cross multiply up. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, 3 times 8 is 24. 12 times 2 is 24. And these two are equal to each other, so therefore these two ratios form a proportion. Well, we're going to use the same idea here that because we both uh, diagonals have the same product, we're going to use that idea to help us solve for a proportion, solve for a missing number to make these two ratios proportional. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, well, 15 times 3 is 45, and 5 times x is 5x. So I'm going to say that these two diagonals, 5x, the product of 5x is the same thing as the product of 3 and 15. Um, so to solve this, I'm going to move this down so that I can solve it a little bit better. Um, so to solve this, this goes back to the algebra. This goes back to solving algebraic equations. I want to isolate the variable, so I need to get rid of the 5. So to do that, I'm going to do the opposite operation, which is to divide by 5. If I divide the right side by 5, I need to divide the left side by 5. These 5's cancel out, so I'm left with x's over here, and then 45 divided by 5, which is 9. So x is equal to 9. And I can go back and I can plug it into this equation up here. Place that one. 5 times 9 is 45. 15 times 3 is 45. So this means that 3 to 5 is equal or is proportional to 9 to 15. These two ratios are proportional to each other. The ratio uh, 4 to 5 is equal to 
x to 3, so we want to make them proportional, solve for x, so we're going to cross multiply. 5 times x, I'm going to go ahead and just write this down here, is 5x, and then 3 times 4 is 12. <clears throat> So again, to isolate the variable, I'm going to divide by 5, and it's just a coincidence that it's the same number from before. Um, it's not always going to be 5. And um, so I'm left with x over here, and then 12 divided by 5. Well, there's not really, you, you can't do this one in your head. So we're going to divide 12 by 5, and it goes in two, time, two times with a remainder of 2. So this is 2 and 2 fifths. If you want to write it as a decimal, if you want to keep going and get 2.4, that is fine. There's no, um, I don't have a rule that it has to be as a fraction or as a decimal. Okay, so as a fraction is perfectly fine. Um, now, same thing works with decimals. 3 to 4 is equal to x to 2.1. So we want to solve for x so that these two ratios are proportional to each other. So I'm going to cross multiply. 4 times x is 4x. 3 times 2.1. We'll do a little bit of math over here off to the side and we get 6.3. So 4x is equal to 6.3. <clears throat> Sorry. So I'm going to divide by 4 so that I can isolate the variable. And when I do that, 4 goes into 6.3. 4 goes into 6 one time. Subtract, I get 2, bring down the 3. 4 goes into 23 five times and I subtract and I get 3. Now because we have a decimal here, we're going to stick with decimals. We want our answer to be a decimal. Um, so we're going to add a 0, bring it down. Sorry, i got to keep extending my page. Uh, 4 goes into 37 times. 7 times 4 is 28. Subtract, get 2. We're going to go to the thousandths place so that we can round to the nearest hundredths. Uh, 4 goes into 25 times and I am done. So I have 1.575. This is a terminating decimal, and <clears throat> in class I've said if the, if the answer terminates, if the decimal terminates, that is your answer. There is no need to round it. You want to show that it's a terminating decimal. However, um, if you are to round to the nearest hundreds place, this would round to 1.58. So I'm going to put the answer as 1.575, oh, I'm sorry, as 1.5 five, seven, five, since the decimal terminates, um, and then that, that's what we're going to leave our answer as, okay? Now, the way that we transfer this is if we're doing word problems. So if I gave you a problem like this, it says when you go to the grocery store, hot Cheetos are on sale, six bags cost three dollars. Um, you decide you will buy nine bags for each of your very best friends. How much money will you need to buy all nine bags? I took this information and I set it up in a proportion. Notice I'm consistent. Bags over dollars equals bags over dollars. You could have put dollars over bags equals dollars over bags, and that would have worked out just fine. You just have to be consistent with however you set it up. So now to solve this problem, I'm going to cross multiply. Nine times three is 27. We're not going to worry about our units for right now. Um, 6 times x is 6x. Again, I'm going to divide both sides by 6 so that I isolate the variable. 27 divided by 6. 6 goes into 27 four times. 4 times 6 is 24. Subtract and get 3. Well, I can see that this is 4 and 3 sixths, which is 4 and a half, <clears throat> which is $4.50. So I would pay $4.50 for nine bags of Cheetos. And the last problem I'm going to do <clears throat> says you get a job working for your dad and he agrees to pay you $11 for every two hours that you work. Since you worked seven hours, how much will you get paid? So again, I've got money over hours equals money over hours. So now I am going to cross multiply. And when I do that, 2 times x is 2x. 11 times 7 is 77. Divide both sides by 2. So now I'm going to do a little bit of math over here off to the side. 2 goes into 72. Sorry, I'm doing this in my head. Okay. Goes in three times. Sorry. Okay, 
2 goes into 77 three times. Subtract it 1, bring down my 7. It goes in 5 times. No, it does not go in 5 times. It goes in 8 times. And <clears throat> I subtract and I get 1, so it's 38 and 1 half, which is the same thing as 38.50. So you would make $38.50 working for your dad for 7 hours.